Born on August 15, 1930, in Kilimambogo in central Kenya, to Leonardas Ndiege and Marcella Awar, low income size of farmers at the time. Tom Joseph Mboya rose from the humble background to become inimitable labor unionist and political leader whose short stint in the political arena for political freedom, for economic opportunity. continues to mesmerize many years after his death. Just who was Tom Boyer? Tom Boyer is said to have been a politician ahead of his time, one who had great intellect, educationist, pan-Africanist, author, independence activist, and one of the founding fathers of the Republic of Kenya. I believe that one day Kenya will be governed by a democratic government, representative and elected by the people. And by the people, I include anybody who decides to make Kenya his home. While employed by the Nairobi City Water as a sanitary inspector, Mboya was elected as a chairperson of the African Staff Association. He developed it into a trade union, which became known as the Kenya Local Government Workers' Union. And when the colonial government refused to recognize the union, Mboya sued for recognition and won. He later helped build the trade union movement in Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania and across Africa. He worked with the then United States Senator John F. Kennedy, who later became President of the United States of America, and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to create education opportunities for African students. Boyer's intelligence, charm, leadership, and oratory skills won him admiration from across the world. He gave speeches, debates, and interviews across the world in favor of Kenya's independence from British colonial rule and spoke at several rallies in favor of the civil rights movement in the United States. Most of the good farming land in the highlands was reserved originally for European farmers, so we have to bring Africans into this area. Mboya spearheaded the negotiations for independence at the Lancaster House conferences and was instrumental in the formation of Kenya's independence party, Kano, which he served as its first secretary general, laying foundation for Kenya's capitalist and mixed economy policies at the height of the Cold War. In 1958, at the age of 28, Mboya was elected conference chairman at the All African People's Conference convened by Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana. In 1953, during the Mau Mau War for Independence, Jomo Kenyatta and other leaders of the Independence Party, Kenya National Union, KAU, were arrested. They asked Mboya to take up leadership of KAU and sustain the struggle. He's capable, he's completely well informed, and I am satisfied with him as the leader of this country. And when the colonial government banned cow, Mboya turned to using the trade unions as a platform to fight for independence. He was elected as Secretary General for the Kenya Federation of Labor, KFL, the umbrella body for trade unions in Kenya. In that role, Mboya gave speeches in London and Washington against British atrocities in Kenya. During this period, he organized several strikes seeking better working conditions for African workers. At that point, the colonial government nearly closed down the labor movement in an effort to suppress his activities. Mboya reached out to other labor leaders across the world. In 1956, after Mboya had returned from the United Kingdom, the colonial government allowed black Africans to run for office and serve in the Legislative Assembly. Tom Boya was elected from Nairobi. He was elected secretary for the African Caucus and continued a campaign for independence, as well as seeking freedom for Jomo Kenyatta and other political prisoners. In 1961, Jomo Kenyatta was released, and together with Oginga Odinga and Mboya, they formed the Kenya African National Union, Kano. In the Independent Republic of Kenya, Mboya was appointed as first cabinet minister for labor. He created the National Social Security Fund, NSSF, Kenya's social security scheme. He also established an industrial court to hear labor management cases. He was later appointed to the Economic Planning Ministry. 
together with Finance Minister Mwai Kibaki, he issued Sessional Paper 10, which defined Kenya's form of economic policies. And in 1969, Mboya, who was married to Pamela Mboya, blessed with five children, was fatally shot on Government Road, now Moy Avenue, as he was leaving a city chemistry. A statute of Mboya was installed on Moy Avenue where he was killed. The nearby busy Victoria Street was renamed Tom Boya Street in his honor. Purity Museo, Channel One News.